Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I I wish BBC would stop calling it Islamic State because it's not an Islamic State. What it is, is an appalling, uh, barbarous regime. It is a perversion of the religion of Islam. And, you know, many Muslims listening to this program will recoil every time they hear the words Islamic State. Hmm. So-called or ISIL is better, but it is uh, an existential threat because what's happening here is the perversion of a great religion and the creation of this poisonous death cult. No, what we have here is the perversion of a great nation. Not the perversion of a great religion, Mr. Cameron. No, we have doublespeak right out of Orwell. You and Obama are cut from the same cloth. You have perverted the language itself using deliberately euphemistic, ambiguous, obscure phraseology to cover up what all of us know to be true. We know that Islam is on the war path. We know that this is a repeat of history. We know that this is the repeat of the Hundred Years' War. We know this is a religious war from their point of view. You can stick your head in your sandals all you want, Mr. Cameron. You can go to all of the Chardonnay dinners that you could possibly put down your gullet, Mr. Cameron, but it's not going to change the fundamental facts of reality. No, ISIS is an Islamic state. You're telling them that they're not an Islamic state? On what basis do you make that statement, Mr. Cameron, so as not to what? Lessen your voter base? You know that that's a corruption of the language. And today on the Savage Nation, we're going to talk about how great civilizations decline throughout history because of the arrogance and the doublespeak and the narcissism and the pleasure orientation of these individuals, the Camerons and the Obamas of the world. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, yes, it is an Islamic state. He says it's not an Islamic state. Hey, global support for ISIS includes up to 42 million Muslims, according to a group. The New York-based research institute Clarion Project crunched numbers from four recent polls surveying Arab public opinion toward the Islamic state, ISIS. Clarion found the terror group supporters are 8.5 million Muslims. But more than 42 million Muslims of the 1.5 billion Muslims feel somewhat positively about the terror group. Do you understand what we are facing here? And that the longer we have cowardly, double-speak leaders like Cameron and Obama in power, the greater our danger grows. Now, what is double-speak? Many of you don't even know who George Orwell is anymore. That's how far we have come from the realities of my time. George Orwell was a writer who wrote this in, um, I believe, Brave in the World. No, that was Huxley wrote Brave in the World, 1984, written in the 1930s by George Orwell. And the reason he wrote it was the fascism of the 30s was becoming apparent to all except the world leaders. And so he wrote about doublespeak then and now in Orwell. He introduced us to the words doublethink and newspeak, doublespeak and Double think and new speak. You know what that is? Now, a word that he didn't use much combines it to it's called double speak. Did you know that? Double speak is saying one thing and meaning another. That's Obama. Double speak is saying one thing and meaning another. That's Hillary. Double speak is saying one thing and meaning another. That's Ted Cruz. Double speak is saying one thing and meaning another. That's Rubio. Double speak is saying one thing and meaning another. That's every politician on the planet. In 1984, when Big Brother and the party say peace, they mean war. When they say love, they mean hate. And when they say freedom, they mean slavery. So let me ask you something. Does that still apply? Do you know any examples of uh, double thinkers, double speakers? I can give you many examples, and I just gave you one. I gave you British Prime Minister Cameron, a fine man indeed, who just won the election based upon lies and rubbish that he would be the conservative opposition to the Socialists who were running against him. He won in a landslide, and what did he do? He did exactly what John Boehner did to the United States of America. He went the other way entirely. He capitulated to the other side. 
You understand what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about the corruption of the West, which is so advanced. The corruption of the West is so advanced that the language itself has been corrupted by Orwellian politicians and news people. Obama and Cameron, in my opinion, represent corruption of language, a corruption of the language itself. Oh, we know what corruption is. That would be the Clinton Library in the minds of millions of people, where we hear that Hillary asked $275,000, for example, for a speech. She didn't, uh, they didn't want to pay it at some obscure university. They hired instead the nobody, the non-entity, the daughter. The non-entity daughter. The girl who can't finish a sentence unless it's written for her. And she asked for $65,000 for a 10-minute speech, I swear to God. $65,000 she would speak for 10 minutes. Tell me, that's not corruption? There's never been a time like this in the history of the United States or of the West where the nation and the West is so perversely and systematically dedicated to the perversion of language in addition to special interests, earmarks, log rolling, vote trading, sweetheart deals, that the system itself is dead, dead in the water. Why do you think uh, that you, the people, have such a low opinion in every poll of Congress? An opinion ranging between 8 and 12 percent approval rating. Because you know they're corrupt. You know that they're not doing anything for us. You know that they're all like John Boehner, a double-talking drunk, in my opinion. Now, on one hand, you could say, well, it's always been like this. That's the easy, the easy way out. The cynic listening to this program would say, what's he complaining about? Politicians have always been corrupt. Well, that is true, but never at this level. Number two, never has national security been so degraded in a nation, in our nation in particular, that the leader of our nation would not even attend the... Uh, meeting of world leaders last year after the Hebdo massacre where Muslims, M-U-S-L-I-M-S, -S, Muslims attack cartoonists, killing many, and then attack Jews in a grocery store. World leaders met to condemn world terrorism. The only one not there was your phony double-talking president, Barry Obama. He wouldn't even attend. Now we wake up and the other day, while the White House was lit up in the rainbow colors to celebrate what? What were they celebrating? The ascension of 2% of the population and they changed the colors of the White House to represent 2% of the population with rainbow lighting? Does it get any crazier than that? A 2% minority wins because of a corrupt Supreme Court, which in my opinion is obviously being bribed. There is no explanation for what the Supreme Court has done other than they are owned lock, stock, and barrel by the Obama administration, no doubt the NSA spying was aimed largely at them. That's my opinion. There's nothing else to explain it. But we'll go into that as a side note. So Obama lights the White House up in the rainbow colors. The same day that Muslims, M-U-S-L-I-M-S, -S, go on a rampage throughout Europe to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the rise of ISIS, which Cameron says doesn't exist. And what they do... A uh, factory owner has his head cut off by a Muslim in Paris and his head's put on a fence. A mosque is blown up in Kuwait. Dozens are killed. Muslim killing Muslims because they're not, let us say, pure enough for one side or the other of this madness. And in Tunisia, an ordinary guy, a master's student in engineering, picks up a Kalashnikov, goes on a beach and executes, we don't even know how many. Cameron knows it's higher than 30. It might be 50. He shot men, women, and children in cold blood, and he did not kill Muslims. He did not shoot any Muslims. He shot only non-Muslims. So don't tell me that we're not living through the perversion of language and the death of the West. We are very clearly living through the perversion of language and the death of the West. And you've got to ask yourself why. Why would Cameron, notably Cameron, why would he lie about the Islamic State like this? when he knows they are the Islamic State in their mind. How can he say they're not the Islamic State? He's defining them for them? Well, would you say the British Empire still exists? Let's redefine the British Empire. Where is the British Empire? It exists on shelves in the back rooms of patriots in England who remember the British Empire. There's no British Empire. 
There's no Britain anymore. And if Obama is not stopped before the end of his madness is over, there will be no America anymore. He is merging the United States of America into a North American trade zone where Mexico and the United States will become one hodgepodge where we inherit the poorest, the least educated, and the most diseased of Mexico. In other words, those of Mexico that Mexico doesn't want will become part of America for us to take care of. Does that make sense? Does that make you uncomfortable? Well, wait until you try to get medical care in two or three years, all of you good liberals who think all is going to keep going on as it is. No, it won't keep going on as it is. It's not going on as it is right now. So I, I want to come back to my main point right now. Global support for ISIS includes up to 42 million Muslims, according to the Clarion Project. Cameron gets up there and says, no, there's no such thing as an Islamic State. He said it's a barbarous regime, perversion of the religion of Islam. I would say he is a perversion of England. Cameron has perverted the whole meaning of England for him to get up and continue to lie about what's going on in front of our eyes. And I will repeat what I taught you yesterday. This is a religious war, a religious war declared by Muslims against every other religion on the planet, not just against Israel and the Jews, you leftists think that that's the reason, don't you? They're at war with other Muslims. They're at war with Hindus. They're at war with Buddhists. They're at war with everybody. And so it's a religious war, which I've told you about. And it began uh, and it ended 100 years later. No matter what we have tried to do, no matter how we have tried to placate the radical Muslims, we have not been able to because there is only one thing fanatics like this understand, which is death. If they are a death cult, I say give them their wish. Let me explain to you. Every historian knows that this is a war that will not end soon. And who do we have in charge of our intelligence agencies? Let us use a phrase that applies. Capons. Capons. Emasculated men men who can no longer protect us from these barbarians because they have been re-educated by Obama's sorority and Muslim pressure groups like CAIR. And of course, the press used to be the fourth estate to keep them straight. But the press is no longer the fourth estate. You know it's become what? How many of you in my audience know what it's become? You've heard Professor Savage explain to you many times that the fourth estate has become what? You know what it is. The fifth column. I'll be right back to explain on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What would you do? Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're talking about double speak. We're talking about the corruption of America, the corruption of the West, the death of the West, corruption of language. An example, uh, the example that I've been using today is the alleged conservative leader of England or Britain, Cameron, saying to the BBC that is ISIS is not Islamic. It's beyond belief, the double speak. And you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? They're doing it because they are corrupt politicians who do not want to lose the Muslim vote. It's that simple. Just as Obama c continues to lie about the type of immigrants we're getting, saying they all come here to work, they all are family people, there are no criminals. We all know that's a bunch of garbage. One third of all prisoners are illegal aliens. You haven't heard that in a while, have you? One third, it hasn't changed, it probably went up. Rapists, murderers, you name it. One third of all prisoners are illegal aliens. So don't tell me they all come here to work. It's impossible to even believe they would be saying things like this. And why does Obama do it? Because the demographics have told him that the middle class is gone for him. The middle class knows what he is. They know he's a, a rank and file member of the Internationalist Brigade, wants to erase the borders of America, wants to replace Christianity as a religion, wants to subjugate the people of America who work for a living, and so he's written you off. 
And so as new demographics are prisoners, illegal aliens, you name it. Put them all together and they're a majority. He's a corrupt politician. Corruption of language, corruption of politicians, corruption of a nation, death of a nation. I want to play for you quickly Jonathan Sachs from England, a piece that I found on YouTube about the religious war we are involved in in clip 29. We are facing a phenomenon in the world that the West has not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th centuries. When they ended in one place, they began in another, and they lasted for more than a century. The same factors present then are present now. One, discontent with an existing power, widely conceived to have been corrupt. Then the Catholic Church, today secular nationalist regimes. Did you hear that? It was a discontent with an existing power widely conceived to have been corrupt, then the Catholic Church. Well, I'll have more to say about the Pope in a few minutes. And today, secular nationalist regimes. Well, today we have something worse than we had uh, the discontent, than we had with the discontent of the Catholic Church then. We have a naked Marxist posing as a Pope. I said it, I live by it. I've never seen anything like it. Today I wake up and I see not only is this fraudulent faker Pope who knows nothing about climate, and wait until you hear what we have to say about who his advisor is on climate, your hair will stand up. The, the advisor on climate is a radical German who doesn't even believe in God. He believes in Gaia. That's who your pope is, is referring to? This faker pope is coming to America to talk not to you in the pews, but to prisoners, transgendered, and homeless. You tell me there's not a worldwide Marxist revolution occurring right under your noses. Go ahead, tell me that. Make my day. And if you think it ends well, you're wrong. Remember how many died under communism. A hundred million! Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. This is not the war between Islam and the West, which ISIL want people to believe. It is a generational struggle between a minority of extremists who want hatred to flourish and the rest of us who want freedom to prosper. And together, we will prevail. What sadness is in my heart to have to listen to this corrupt politician lie about the realities of the day. 30, 40, 50 Britishers sitting on a beach under an umbrella harming nobody, executed by a radical Muslim in the name of Islam. Probably a hundred or more injured. Holiday makers, people who, poor people. No one rich goes to Tunisia. Poor working British people who saved up for a holiday, who went to that nation of Tunisia. And by the way, most Tunisians are not radicalized. I want to say that. Tunisians themselves have suffered at the hands of the radical Muslims in ways you could never imagine. Of course it's a war. Of course it's a war. It's not the perversion of a great religion. It's the fundamentalist interpretation of this religion. What, do you have to be a fool to understand that? No, it's not a perversion of the religion. It's in the Quran, for God's sakes. It says kill the infidel. You idiots, you. Many of you liberals went out and bought a Quran after 9-11. I actually know someone, a lawyer. Right after 9-11, he went out and bought a Quran. I said, what are you doing that for? He says, well, uh, I, I, I want to understand where they, who they are. I said, you want to understand? Well, they've been teaching you who they are for quite a while now. Going back to the Crusades, they've been teaching you who they are. I guess you didn't learn it in your, in your, in your public school. In my great novel, Countdown to Mecca, there's a plot where a group of U.S. generals plot to blow up Mecca during the Hajj thinking they'll take out the most radical members of Islam. Well, my hero, Jack Hatfields, knows that that's a disastrous mistake and that if they did that, they would radicalize all of Islam. And so my book is the opposite of what the liberals have said it is, and that's why the New York Times banned it from the bestseller list, even though the book beat five books in count of numbers sold. They made believe it didn't exist. So the book is about Jack Hatfield stopping the attack and uh, the generals, one of the greatest segments of the novel is where the generals meet and discuss why they want to blow up Mecca. It's one of the most interesting passages. 
It's a political thriller, and I really recommend you read it for July 4th if you haven't gotten it yet. Countdown to Mecca in bookstores now. And I want you to look at it. It's very important. It's a great book for July 4th. But getting back to the death of the West and the corruption of language, uh, I don't know how you don't see what Doublethink and Newspeak are. It was written in the book 1984 by, by Orwell. It means saying one thing and meaning another. It means when they say peace, they mean war. When they say Islam is a relig religion of peace, it means they're lying. Because, by the way, Islam does not mean peace. Do you know that? That's what Obama said in the beginning. What does Islam mean? It means submission. Did you know that? It means submission to their God. It doesn't mean peace. It's not a religion of love. It doesn't teach love anywhere in the book that I know of. Christianity is a religion of love. Look how well we're doing against this uh, opposition here. You know, there's a wonderful thing about Christianity, which says turn the other cheek. But if, if your cheeks get beaten up, how many times can you turn it till you fight back? One thing I love about watching boxing or mixed martial arts is the, the religious nature of so many of the fighters. I used to like it when I was a child. I would watch boxing matches with my father. And it used to impress me to see the fighters praying, crossing their chests before the fight, praying to God for the energy and the wisdom and the power, maybe even the chance to win that fight. And then I, as a child, was a cynic. I realized that later on. I was cynical from age five because I'd see both fighters praying to the same God on opposite ends of the ring. They were asking the same God to let them win with God's power. I never understood that one. I said, how, how can God choose? And they're both praying to the same God to win. As a child, I saw the, the conflict right there. But when I watch fights today and I see Mexican fighters who are amazing fighting, they all are very religious, every last one of them. They're family men, they're religious, and I see a hope there. I see a great hope there in the midst of all of this madness. And so I want to take some calls now at 855-407-282 on my discussion today on corruption, the corruption of language itself. British Prime Minister Cameron saying to the BBC, ISIS is not, not an Islamic state. I mean, you can come in and chime in any way you want on this or any other topics. When the show ended yesterday, we had a blockbuster of a disaster when the corrupt Supreme Court ruled that states have no right to impose voter ID. It was the death of America. It was the end of the road. If you cannot enforce citizenship in federal elections, then there are no federal elections of any validity whatsoever. They're meaningless. You may as well give out voter ID card, uh, voter uh, ballots in China and Mexico, Russia, wherever you want. And it means that we've lost our sovereignty. Now, every justice would not understand that. It doesn't matter how they've interpreted the law. It means they perverted the law. It means they've twisted. It means they've twisted the law. And there's only one reason they did it. It's because they're being blackmailed. They're corrupt. The five justices. Now, four of them are diehard revolutionary communists. We know that they always have been. Just look at the past of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I stand by those, those words, diehard revolutionary communist from the time she came out of the womb. She was a red diaper doper baby bred in Brooklyn or some other despicable borough of New York, no doubt, or an akin to New York, steeped in hatred of America, steeped in hatred of the flag, steeped in hatred of Christianity itself and wanting to turn America on its ear. So he wrote her off. But Kennedy, where did he come from? Wasn't he appointed by the great Ronald Reagan? The great Ronald Reagan appointed Justice Kennedy, and he was approved by Edwin Meese, that great conservative, who had one of his low-down lawyers inside the Justice Department, who's now a flamboyant talk show host who every day tells you what a conservative is. Every day, the lawyer who vetted Justice Kennedy goes on the air and tells you that he knows what a conservative is. Well, let me ask you something. If he knows what a conservative is now, how come he didn't know what a conservative was then? When did he not know what a conservative was? When he, when he approved Kennedy? Or now while he sits in fumes and spits into the microphone hating everyone around him? When did he not know what a conservative was? Now or then? It's an interesting question. I don't think you'll get an answer for it. But never forget who gave us Justice Kennedy. It was Ronald Reagan, Edwin Meese, and an unknown lawyer who's now posing as a conservative talk show host who has nothing to say other than to attack me. And I'm not taking it anymore. And if I hear one more word about me that's a perversion of reality, I will unleash on that little man like he's never been unleashed upon. I will tell you things about him that you don't even want to know. 
It will make old women weep. I'm warning him to stop it. And I'm warning him to start becoming a talk show host instead of a little loudmouth rat, a little rat so Rizzo who got away with murder all these years because no one will stand up to him. You gave us Justice Kennedy. You own Justice Kennedy. So don't tell us that we're not conservative enough for you. You are a fraud through and through. And that's all I'm going to say on him because he's not the issue. He's just another phony lawyer hiding as a conservative talk show host, making believe he knows what a conservative is day in and day out, beating everyone up around him, beating up paper tigers. The guy couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. Mr. Tough Guy. Well, here we are facing the death of the West because of men like him. Obama warns Iran as nuke deal deadline extended. Oh, really? Are you kidding me? President Obama says he's prepared to walk away from a nuclear deal. Who does he think he's fooling? He's owned by them. We know who Valerie Jarrett is. Did you hear what Jimmy Carter had to say? Jimmy Carter was once a submarine commander. Could you believe this? Do you know that Jimmy Carter was once the commander of a nuclear submarine? Have you heard the things Jimmy Carter has said about the United States recently? He said things that would make your hair stand up. We'll play them for you on the Savage Nation. But let me give the callers a chance now on the Savage Nation. Dave on WABC, he's gone. He came and went. Alice on WABC, line one, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Michael, I was a language major in college, so when you talk about languaging, and this is the way that they destroyed our, our democracy and our republic, you're exactly right. The power of words is enormous, and words are the bearers of thought. So when you come up with a phrase like equity in marriage, all the idiots line up and swallow it hook, line, and sinker. When you come up with a term, look at William Jefferson Blythe Clinton sat there with a Lehrer, a Jim Lehrer, and said, there is no affair. And I heard it clearly. He's saying there is no affair. He's not saying there was no affair. And we're uneducated. We went to the GPS, that is the government public schools. We got dumbed down by all those ladies with closely cropped hair in front of the classroom who claimed to be teachers. But they couldn't no, they're not teach. teachers. No, they weren't teachers. We know what they were. They were re-educators. Yes, but you've got the cuddle puddle at Stuyvesant High School in New York City. You're in New York, kid. You know Stuyvesant High School. If you Google the two words cuddle puddle, you'll see the cover story in New York Magazine, January 30, 06. And that's where a young reporter, a true journalist young lady, went in with her camera and her pad. And she documented the fact that these children were sent down each with a member of their own sex, to disrobe in the cuddle puddle and explore each other anatomically. That's New that, York. that was in the Stuyvesant High School, the once great Stuyvesant High? Please educate ourselves here. Stuyvesant High School, January 30, 06, New York Magazine cover story. You don't have So to one of the perverts got into the science high school under the guise of what, affirmative action? That they weren't hiring enough of her type? And the first thing she did was pervert the students and take them off science and put them into perversion? Well, they're all together. The teachers and the administrators uh, colluded on this. This is collusion. Okay. And, and well, okay. It's just a furtherance, but I want to get to the big picture, which is let's talk about the war we're involved in, the religious war that uh, Islam has declared against the world. Do you agree with me that they have declared war on the rest of the world, yes or no? Yes, but they, they're using languaging to take advantage of our idiocy and our stupidity. In other words, there's a man who comes on the radio before you during the day, and he lost it today. He had a meltdown. He blew a chip. He was talking about the supreme stupidity of everybody who listens to him. And that's 20 million people, he says. I say it's 10. It doesn't matter. It's a lot of what, idiots. Limbaugh attacked all of his listeners as being stupid? He ranted, he raved, he lost it. It was, it was a spectacular day for Why that. Why would he call his listeners stupid? What, what does he gain by that? Well, it's, see, because he believes, as I do and you do, in the truth sometimes. Now, we believe in it more often than he does. He stretches it. But what, why would a talk show call his entire audience stupid? That's something that Bill Maher would do about conservatives. That's something a drug addict would do on television uh, about conservatives by lumping them all in one group. Why would Limbaugh do that? I find it admirable because it's true. The, the book entitled Just How Stupid Are We was written by Shakespeare, And the answer is... Wait, wait, so you're saying you agree with Limbaugh that we're all stupid? Well, well, of course, with notable exceptions. I mean, you, let's not... Uh, How could you say all of the listeners of talk radio are stupid? That, that unto itself is a ludicrous statement. No, I said 
most of them are, Michael. Most of us are. In other words, more than we wish. In other words, you can't tell when you're stupid. You don't know whether you're stupid or not. No, no, no. Now you're, now you're trying to parse words and you're trying to trap me. I can see what you're doing, but you're wrong. You bro. I but love you're, you're very, you're very wrong about that. No, most of my listeners are very intelligent. I disagree with you entirely. Limbaugh's listeners are not. They're, they're well, I, I can't speak for his listeners. I don't know who they are. In a, in a pool of millions of listeners, whatever the number may be, you can't generalize or overgeneralize and say all are stupid or all are smart. You can't do that. It's, it doesn't work, does it? It's a mass audience. This is called mass media. Let's talk about what we're doing here. This is radio. This is mass media. So we don't know who's listening. How could you generalize about who the audience is? Well, your listeners went out and formed a new nationalist party called the We Party. In other words, it's, it's the National We Party and the first organization was the Connecticut We Party, and this is dedicated to CPR. Conservation, preservation, and restoration of all the things that made our country great. And it was your inspiration that did it. But do you think Limbaugh... Well, you was see, again, you're pulling my leg. I don't even know who you're referring to now. What's a We Party now? The, 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 Google the Connecticut We Party, go to LinkedIn, and you'll see that this is a brush fire based on your... Right, so the Connecticut... Did you say the Connecticut, the Connecticut Whig Party or We Party? We, the first word of your constitution is we. If you ask all the idiots... Okay, all right, all right. So we're getting d distracted here. My, f my primary point is that the West has been corrupted and the language itself has been corrupted, and we agree on that, correct? Yes, certainly. Okay, well, I thank you for the call. Let me send you a gift for July 4th. After the fireworks, you can start reading Countdown to Mecca. If you'll stay in the line, a free copy goes out to you. Thanks, Alice from WABC. Let me ask the audience this. What do you think explains all of the horrendous radical left-wing movements of the Supreme Court from no voter ID, gay marriage, Obamacare? Let's see. You can't discriminate in, in housing anymore, meaning if a poor person wants to move to a rich neighborhood, you must let them in even if they can't afford it. That also happened last week. Uh, what does Obama really want? Who do you think is controlling the Supremes, particularly the, the swinger voter? Kennedy, the swinger voter Kennedy. Who's controlling him and how? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. about corruption here okay corruption 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 when you say corruption what you think of is corruption on a petty level which is petty graft smearing off a politician paying money for favors paying money for access we all know that's gone on we know it's illegal we know new york state runs on it that we know i mean they took sheldon silver out uh we know that the escaped prisoners in upstate new york were used as a shield to protect certain high-powered uh, politicians in New York from inquiries by the fifth estate by the yeah by the uh, excuse me the fifth the fourth estate which became what it's not the fourth estate anymore I promise to tell you what it's become the fifth column no the fifth column is going to report on corruption in New York State they instead reported on the chase for these unknown prisoners they refused to talk about the Muslim war against the West the murders in Tunisia were hardly shown I watched Fox News Friday. I was screaming. They wouldn't run it. Not Martha Washington nor any of them. They would hardly ever refer to it. The only one on Fox News who refers to this war is Brett Baer. We'll see how much longer he lasts under the new liberal regime of Fox News. Now that Rupert has turned the reins over to the children, we'll see how liberal the children are. We'll see if they approximate the Google boys. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, 
And here he is, Michael Savage. I know it's a new studio and all, but my listeners must have some trans music on the Savage Nation or they're going to tune out the show. We missed this is the new Michael Savage. I didn't blow a fuse. Who was singing this? Nancy Sinatra? It was a sexy song when it came out. It's nothing now. It was an era of the times, you know, pro projected a certain... Knock it off, it stinks. That's all. Break the record. All right, so here we are. We wake up, Pope and USA to meet with homeless prisoners and immigrants. That's number one. Later on in this hour, you're not going to believe what we have. We have a scientist who knows who the Pope's advisor on climate is. And when you hear this story, you'll know exactly the rest of the story, which is the Pope is the biggest dope in the history of the, paper, of the papacy. But he's not really that stupid, is he? He was put in for a reason. Just as the secret hand selected Obama, adjusted the data, manipulated the coverage, picked and, uh, picked and chose where the votes would come and go, they also picked the first non-European pope in 1,200 years. We are witnessing the emergence of a worldwide Marxist dictatorship in the United States and the world. That's what you're actually watching. Now, you see, if you watch the pieces of it, you can get excited and yell and scream, but if you're not watching the entire locomotive, you don't know where the train is going. You're looking at individual cars. Oh, the Supreme Court did this. Oh, Obama did that. Oh, the Pope said this. Oh, de Blasio said that. Oh, this one said that. Oh, Hillary said this. Well, those are the cars of the train, but the big train, the big train is taking us down the drain. That's where it's going. So the question is, how did they get to compromise the justices? That's what people are asking. Intelligent people are asking the question, how could all of this come at us so quickly? It's impossible to believe. Let's put aside gay marriage. It's not the most important thing in the world. Put it aside for the minute. It's very important to families. It's very important to the religious. But the average person doesn't even care that much about it. But I'll, I will tell you what the average person cares about. What these sneaks did last night is far bigger than gay marriage. They said that states cannot require ID for federal elections. Do you have any idea how far-reaching that, that and how damaging that is? Have you a been able to figure this out? And I asked yesterday, as I will ask again today, those of you on the Democrat left side, how can you celebrate such a thing? Where in your learning did you determine that it's okay for non-citizens to vote in your country? How can that benefit you? What will they vote? Will they vote uh, something of benefit to you or something of deficit to you? How can you think so twistedly? Is the schooling that bad that you would think in your own disinterest? You think in the interests of others instead of yourself? Why? Why would you do that? Who makes them so sacred? Why would you put their needs above those of the nation? But put the nation aside because you liberals don't believe there is a nation. You believe that there's a transnational situation. There should be no nation. You see, you're living in the fantasy. The same fantasy, by the way, that the EU had, which is that if they eliminated borders and eliminated nationalism, there would no longer be any wars. The Serbs wouldn't fight the Croatians, the French wouldn't fight the Germans. Uh, nobody would fight with each other. The vision of the idiots, the communists and the perverts who are running the EU, the child molesters in Brussels, we'll talk about that another time, that was hushed up. They have a secret network of children uh, that they use. You won't believe any of this because you, won't, you, you didn't hear it from uh, Brian Williams. So therefore, it can't be true. The degenerates who run the EU had a vision, the same vision Obama has, which is that if you break borders and you destroy sovereignty of nations, all will be well around the world. People will get along. There'll be no conflict and there'll be eternal prosperity. How'd that work out for Greece? Now, why is it that Greece is failing economically? Because they're a basket case economically. And as Margaret Thatcher famously said, socialism is a wonderful system until you run out of other people's money. Well, Greece ran out of other people's money. They were living on handouts from the rest of the EU, mainly the hardworking Germans. The Germans know what the Greeks were. The Greeks were not, they were never, ever, ever able to support themselves they never should have been made a member of the European Union. And the only reason the Machiavellian leaders of the EU wanted Greece in so early without any reforms 
was to extend the hegemony of the EU and to threaten Russia, by the way, on its southern flank. You don't see any of this. It was always against Russia. That's all I have in their mind is anti-Russian sentiment. The whole EU was created with one goal in mind, which was to encircle and threaten Russia. So you wonder why Putin is reacting. You know, for every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. I think that's Einstein's law of, uh, one of Einstein's laws. I confuse that with the third law of thermodynamics, but it isn't. A physicist friend of mine corrected me. But nevertheless, the phrase is, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you threaten Russia, you bring Greece into the EU, you bring Ukraine into the EU, you put troops on the border of Russia. What do you expect Putin to do? Roll over? He's not going to roll over. The, the Russians would rather eat pine bark in a war against the West. You don't know who the grandsons of Stalingrad are. You people have no idea. You have no idea what the Russian spirit is made of. I pray to God that this idiot sorority of ours that's running America does not make the mistake of putting our troops in harm's way against the Russians. Not only would it be a disaster for all concerned, they would decimate us. They decimate us for many reasons. And yet these idiots surrounding Obama gleefully talk about putting troops on the border of Russia. But I'm getting a little far afield, am I not? Let's bring it down home and let's keep it simple. Gay marriage, uh, then they threw us a bone. They said you could use coal, or you right-wingers, you like coal. I personally don't know coal. Or I don't know anyone in the coal business. I guess you would think that I know someone in the coal business. I don't even like coal particularly. I know you can turn diamonds into coal, uh, turn coal into diamonds. I like that part about coal. I don't have a coal-fired furnace. I have no money in coal stocks, but I guess they assume anyone who is in favor of uh, using coal in power plants owns coal stocks. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't own any, coal, own any coal stocks. Then they said the justices, the perverted justices, or the, uh, excuse me, the, the compromised justices, what I mean. The compromised Supreme said you can use the injection for uh, prisoners on death row. That it's not a bad injection. It's not, <clears throat> it doesn't constitute uh, cruel and unusual punishment, so you're allowed to kill them. Death penalty is okay. They threw us that bone. They figured, okay, gay marriage, we drove them insane with that. Obamacare drove them insane with that. Too much in one week. All right, throw them coal, throw them the needle. They'll calm down the right-wing nuts. The next minute, they tell you you have no right to voter ID because Obama was willing to capitulate to big business because that's who he's there for anyway. I mean, what are, you, what are you kidding me? You think he's a leftist? Obama's not a leftist. He's a Machiavellian out for himself. And speaking of Obama, how's the wife doing? She's on another trip. Just came back from one. Had a nice shopping trip in Italy uh, while the world was on fire. And she comes back and she gives a speech, by the way. I know you're not supposed to say anything about the first lady, but this is a special case. Globe-trotting Michelle Obama announces more foreign trips to promote education after sojourns to Japan, Cambodia, and the UK. And she comes back and, and boasts she's going to go on more trips. Apparently her and the mother and the children love that. Oh, would you like Air Force One? Would you, would you like to fly Air Force One to Europe as opposed to, let's say, Southwest Airlines to uh, even L.A. from San Francisco? You know they have big seats on Air Force One. They even have showers. They have beds. They have dining rooms. You know that, right? Oh, you sleep on that plane. No wonder she likes to talk about education around the world at your expense. Listen to clip six. I traveled to Japan, and I had the privilege of standing with Mrs. Ake Abe, who is the wow. wife of the prime minister. And oh. together we announced a new partnership between our countries to educate adolescent girls in developing <laughs> countries. Uh, shortly thereafter, I visited Cambodia, one of the first oh. countries uh, where Let Girls Learn will operate. Uh, I traveled to London uh, with my daughters and my mom, wow, uh, where our countries nice. announced a partnership with the oh, UK terrific. and delivered nearly $200 million of investment in girls' education. And where'd she get the 200 mil from? What do you mean she delivered? What, she have it in a satchel? What do you mean she delivered $200 million of investment in girls' education? Who's, where's that money going? What do you mean girls' education? Don't you just love this? Now it goes back to my opening, corruption of the West and doublespeak. That whole speech was doublespeak. It's doublespeak. The whole thing is doublespeak. Girls learn will operate. I travel with my daughters and my mom. I'm sorry, but it offends me. 
Have you ever heard of a first lady who travels with her mother at public expense? I'm asking you a question. Why is this not a fair question? Has anyone in America asked, has there ever been a president in history who had a mother-in-law squatting in the White House at public expense? I'm sorry. Why is she living there for free? Why is she not paying rent in the White House? Surely a room in the White House is worth, what, let's say a room in Marin County for a single working uh, woman would be 1500 to $2,000 a month, right? That's for an ordinary room in a house in Marin County, a single room in San Francisco, $1,500 to $2,000 in a stinking apartment. I would think that a bedroom in the White House has got to be worth, what, 1800 a month? I'm joking. Maybe $18,000 a month with the staff? $100,000 a month? I mean, run the numbers on what it costs to keep the mother-in-law in the White House. Why can I not ask this question? Do I not live in a nation of laws? Where in the world is it written that you're allowed to bring an entire extended family into the White House? I guess there's no rules against it, so he may as well violate it like everything else he does. It reminds me of the fake handicapped people on the airlines. I'm sitting there. I'm A1 or A2 on Southwest, supposed to be the second one to board. They have the thing, the racket, the handicap racket. Now, I have nothing against people who are really sick in wheelchairs because I had a handicapped brother, so I have tremendous sympathy for really handicapped people. I certainly want them to go ahead. But you know what the racket is? They put one person who's not really sick in a wheelchair, like the grandmother, and 14 immigrants go on the plane ahead of the people who paid $100 more to get on uh, for early boarding. And they sit there smirking at you when you get on. Smirking, they're sitting in the first three rows, like having a picnic, a how, a hay out. And by the way, old granny who was pushed on the wheelchair by the attendant, the minute she hit the tarmac, she sprinted up the gangplank. You ever seen that one? It's like the people with the blue cards that aren't really handicapped who I curse every time I see them. I love when they get out of the car with the handicap zone and they suddenly, they're, they're healthy enough to walk into a restaurant. I usually harass them verbally. And you should too. That's called take your country back one phony at a time. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let's face it. Now, this is exactly the kind of work that I plan to do for my remaining time as First Lady and beyond. We got a lot of work ahead. Really? Uh, the U.S. will continue to call on developed countries around the world to partner with us and invest Who's in us? adolescent girls' education. What does that mean? And when they do, I'm going to hop on a plane and join them hop on so a that plane? we can highlight this great uh, work that's going on. I'll also oh. be visiting developing countries oh. to sh mm. uh, showcase the impact that these investments are uh, You know what she's doing? You know, are having you, on girls. She, uh, turn it off. She went on the government media complex's outlet C-SPAN. Someone was saying, hey, look, you know, knock it off. The travel is starting to be buzzed about by the nuts out there, the right wingers. They can't take it anymore. Why don't you come on uh, Brian Lamb's outlet if he's still around? I don't know where he is. Whoever's running C-SPAN. You know, tell us what the work's about so the schmucks don't think you're abusing the uh, the office there. Talk about the education. We'll write it up for you. Education. Uh, what you're going to do, how important the work is, something like that. You can make it up as you go along. You're going to hop on a plane. Don't say Air Force One. When I'm going to go uh, around the world and hop on a plane. So you're going to jump on Southwest, but you're going to jump on American to travel? No, no, no. She doesn't gonna hop on a plane. No, sorry, Bob. She needs that 70 assistants with her. They're going to hop on a plane. They're going to hop on American and United and whatever flies where she's going. Fly the cars, the bulletproof limos, you know, whatever she needs to talk about adolescent girls' education. What does that mean? Does anyone know? I don't know. Joe, do you know on Line 7, WMAL in Washington? What does she mean by that? Well, I mean, she's a complete phony. If she was so concerned about adolescent girls getting educated in impoverished nations, she would start her tour in every single Islamic nation in the world because that's where little adolescent girls can't even get an education. Well, she was in London, to her credit. She spoke before a Muslim girls' school. And she uh, was very polite to them. She said, when I look at you, I see myself. So she definitely bonded with the Muslim girls in England. So far as I know, she didn't go to any other girls' school. She went to a Muslim girls' school in England, Joe. Well, that's my point. Uh, they, they're getting educated because they're in a Western country. But, I mean, if she wants... Right, of course. That's right. I mean, did she tell them not to join up with jihad? 
Did you tell him not to not to go on the internet and join ISIS? What you do? Glorify Islam again? Why don't you go to Saudi Arabia and tell King what's his face to, to let his girl little girls get educated and stop mutilating their genitals? Now, Joe, that's an embarrassing fact. This female genital mutilation thing is very embarrassing. Because, you see, I think that you're a retrograde throwback right-winger. You don't see the cultural imperative of mutilating li little girls. You, you, you're locked into the, the, the antiquated religion of Christianity, and you're a secularist. I mean, this is a fine part of the religion in Africa, in, in particular, where they mutilate little girls for life and cause unlimited pain by cutting off their clitoris. Right, it's sick. Well, that's not sick. It's sick to you because you're a Christian. But if you were an enlightened Muslim from Africa, that wouldn't be sick. That'd be the way to go. You mutilate your little girl. You don't want her to have any pleasure in sex. That would be a defilement of your religion. Man, See, I, I, think you, I think that, Joe, you're an example of the problem. I mean, I, I sympathize with you, but it's a product of your imperialist education to not accept the cultural definition of what surgery is. And so if you have a kitchen knife around or a steak knife after dinner, you then, uh, after you have your steak or your lamb or lamb and kebab, you then mutilate your little girl, and that, that makes her a pure a Muslim to many Africans. You do know that. It's a fact. And incidentally, by the way, those of you who want to nail me to a cross for this, it's actually illegal in the United States of America, no matter what you leftists would believe. Okay, when I come back more on the globe-trotting Michelle Obama, the continuous assault upon the truth, and the perversion of language itself right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be absolutely nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. What a beautiful tune. I got to tell you that the rock and roll singers of the 50s did more to better race relations in this nation than did all the liberal politicians put together. And I stand by those words, and you never heard it anywhere else. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Those rock and roll singers of the 50s did more to cement relations between the races than all of the phony politicians put together. That leads us back to the clock, 34 minutes after the hour on the Savage Nation. We now switch to the lies coming out of the Pope's office on global warming, amongst other areas of question. And we learned today something shocking. We learned that the so-called scientist who advises Pope Francis is a pantheist who believes in Gaia, not in God. We read Pope Francis's recent encyclical on global warming, but you didn't know that the chief, quote, scientist who advised the Pope on this major document is an atheist. According to our guest, Dr. William Briggs, Hans Schellnuber is a devout believer in the Gaia principle which states that, quote, all life interacts with the earth and the earth with all life to form a giant, self-regulating living system. The earth knows man and his activities and frankly isn't too happy with him. Well, I can agree with that. It doesn't mean that we have to now throw God out with the bathwater, do we? I'm a natural scientist and I certainly see the divinity in an ant. No one has to teach me that. I've seen the spark in an animal's eye rather than the animal's anatomy. In fact, that's why I never went further in anatomy. Because I was too busy dreaming about the glint in the animal's eye as I was about to dissect it. And the, the professor would say, Michael, why are you not proceeding with the dissection? And I said, Professor, I'm interested in the glint in the animal's eye. Well, they encouraged me to leave anatomy at that point. So this is not news to me. But we don't have to throw God out to believe that there's a divinity in all things living. What's important here, though, is that we listen to our guest, Dr. William Briggs, about the scientific pantheist, who advises Pope Francis. Dr. Briggs, a pleasure to have a man of intelligence on the program. Thank you for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So who is this uh, Hans Schellnuber? What is his background? Yeah, he's a quantum physicist originally, but uh, he saw his opportunity to jump into the political arena with climate change and did so with gusto. He's the guy who came up with all these ideas of tipping points you might have heard of. Tipping mm -hmm. these periods of time which, if we don't do something by the time it happens, the world will be doomed. They ah. keep issuing these tipping points. They keep predicting, well, if we don't do something by 2006, we're going to be doomed. If we don't do something by 2007, 
we're going to be doomed and so forth. I see. Yeah, we've heard that over the last few years. I think, according to Al Gore, we should all be underwater by now. We, uh, uh, I, I believe that there'd be polar bears floating in our living rooms by now if we believed Al Gore 10 years ago. What about this, Dr. Briggs? This is the shocking part. Apparently, the Pontifical Academies of Science locked out of the encyclical process any scientists who do not believe in the existence of global warming. Is that true? That's absolutely true. Uh, Archbishop Sanchez Sarando had a conference uh, back in April at the Pontifical Academy of Science at which only those who believed in global warming theory of doom were invited. Hans Schellenhuber, he was one of those guys, and he openly has bragged about keeping skeptical scientists like myself and others away from the Vatican so that uh, no dissension could be heard. And so well, that sounds like the, 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 doesn't that sound like the golden age of the, of the pontiff and the, the age of Galileo? This is, a, this is a terrible danger we're risking here. I mean, they've advised the Pope so badly on these things. Uh, unfortunately, it's led him to write things in the encyclical uh, that aren't true. For instance, the Pope says the temperature has been increasing. Well, that's not true. For the past almost two decades now, the temperature, it's meandered around a little bit, it's true, but it has not increased. Yet the models, the predictions, have said the temperature should be increasing, increasing, increasing some more. The discrepancy between what is modeled, the theory, and reality grows ever and ever larger. And now it used to be a fundamental principle of science that when a model did so badly, you knew that the theory which underlay the model was false. Every scientist mm -hmm. used to know this. But now people are scared to come out and say this, this simple scientific fact. And they're scared to say it because they're attacked or they're locked out, like, uh, like Schellenhuber has done with the Pontifical Academy. Yeah, but this is going. This is the, the the church going backwards to the medieval times, where anyone who didn't didn't believe in their theories was considered apostate, and and were was excommunicated or, or assassinated. This is a retrograde throwback era in the history of the church. It's astounding to me that they get away with it. But I want to make it simple for my audience, Doctor Briggs, which is this: one of the first rules that you teach young children when you're teaching them science, even in the high school level, is that in science there are no absolutes, meaning. There's no such thing as all the scientists agree or that all the truth is in. Science is an emerging subject. Whatever the subject may be, we're always open to new discoveries or new evidence, aren't we? That, that is absolutely 100% true. Not only that, there is no such thing as this false and faulty so-called consensus that 97% of scientists agree that man-made global warming is dangerous. This is false. This is not true at all. We have a paper uh, showing this is not the case. They do some funny statistics and bad counting and all this kind of... If you go and talk to people in the field, nobody believes this kind of stuff, or hardly anybody. There's only a few dozen people who keep this sort of lock on, on the political situation, on the scientific situation, and you can't break it. I, I, th th I can ask your audience now. I, any scientist is listening to this. You tell me. The models have been so bad, so atrociously bad, and for so long, decades now, what does that mean? That can only mean one thing, that the theory that they're building these models on is false. That's the only conclusion that we can draw. All right, so let's take the average listener out there who's driving around in a car listening to the Savage Nation, the millions of listeners on these stations, and he says, okay, why is it that the Pope would join with these uh, con men in the world of uh, false science to push the idea of global warming, what is it? Isn't it follow the money? Isn't this a huge money grab for the for the new world order? It's funny you should mention this. This Schellenhuber has called for a new world order. He calls it the Great Transformation, in which ah. he calls for a brand new what he calls an Earth Constitution, oh. and he calls for a global council, which he wants to have elected from every oh. member. Oh, my God. It's right out of the fascist. Uh, it's a fascist textbook this guy is, is espousing. Okay, so we know that there's an attempt on, at a power grab, a money grab, a world tax, controlling our economies through the guise of the environment. Anyone who disagrees is an apostate who should be imprisoned or worse. How in the world are we going to stop this juggernaut when Obama himself is involved in this, in this uh, big lie? 
Boy, that's a great question. I think the only thing we could do is what we're doing right now. We could have these kind of discussions. There's nothing. There's no. There's no solid money behind the skeptical uh, or real science effort like we're doing here. You hear. Uh, so our Archbishop Sanchez Sarando said when he was called on these very things that we were talking about and, and made to answer questions about him, he said. All he said was, oh, you must be uh, deriving your money from oil. So yeah, that's the standard first... lie that comes out of the radical left. That's right. Anyone who disagrees with them or shows evidence to the contrary is in the, in the hands of the coal industry, which is ludicrous. It is. I, I've never taken a penny. It's not that I wouldn't want to, but they don't offer the money. You, you go, you, you go ask for Yeah, this. in other words, you take coal money if they offered it. There is no coal money to support the truth here. It's a very bad situation, and particularly when so many gullible Catholics who are uneduc uneducated believe every word this man says. I would think that the middle class in America certainly can uh, investigate the evidence for themselves, and they say, well, where do I look for skeptical opinions on global warming? You know what my answer is, Dr. Briggs? I always say, look up the Vostok ice core samples, V-O-S-T-O-K. I'm sure you're familiar with that one, right? Sure. Yeah, the, the Vostok ice core samples show, uh, they give an indication of both what the temperature was by proxy and the old CO2, what it was by proxy. And what they basically show is that uh, the relationship is sort of inverted from what people think. Now, it's not that CO2 drives temperature, it's that temperature drives CO2. The greener it is on the planet, the more life there is, the richer life is, the more abundant life is, the, the better crops and trees grow, and therefore the better animals do. So that's what we're seeing now. In fact, things are not getting worse. Uh, things are getting better. Well, they, they yes. localized problems, to be sure. There's always localized problems. But as far as a global pandemic, as far as the Earth, as Professor Schellenhuber would say, seeing us as some sort of disease or disruption uh, the opposite is true and easily verified to be true doctor doctor what is your background what field is it in dr briggs uh, originally meteorology atmospheric physics uh, climatology and uh, latterly statistics and philosophy of science so you're a real scientist in climatology and you're at the center and they don't even want to believe a word you have to say no will they look at any of the evidence you present correct Yes, that's a fact. You can't, get, uh, you can't get a word in. What of your writings can the average listener find right now? Is there anything that we can research or uh, grab a hold of, buy, or whatever? I have, I have a website. It's wmbriggs.com. They could look up. See that? You're not even selling a book. You're not even selling a book. You're too much of a purist, Dr. Briggs. I'm not. I'm not making any money on this. I'm losing money. It, I've had people turn down, uh, turn me down for employment. They say I don't want to work with a denier, or they don't. Oh. Want the political baggage that comes with working with people like me. It, it is not a winning proposition to take this side by any means. You know, maybe I should set up a skeptics institute and fund it, and bring in some money and hire people like you to disseminate the truth about global warming. I mean, maybe then we'll get somewhere. If I set up a skeptics institute, wouldn't that be fun? It would, be. it would be. You know what's interesting, Dr. Briggs, before you go? I remember when I was a science grad student in my fields of, of learning. I remember reading a, a, a famous book in chemistry called The Skeptical Chemist. I'm sure as a science historian, you know the book I'm referring to, written hundreds of years ago. The Skeptical Chemist, where the word skeptical is the key word here. What in the heck is wrong with being a skeptical climatologist? Why is the word skeptical not permitted to be discussed in the world of science anymore when it's the core belief of science which is to be skeptical? There's too much money in the field. There's too much politics. The way it is now, government comes and they dictate, I want these results. And they find plenty of people lined up who say, well, I'm not going to give them exactly what they want. I'll give them what I think is right. But lo and behold, they find exactly what they were requested to find. And, these and that, You know, I, I, I made a reference, Doctor, to the ex-Soviet system, the Lysenko affair, where the exact same thing happened. When the power structure in the Soviet Union wanted to prove something in genetics that was false, they mandated all scientists to prove it to be true. It's exactly what we're seeing here in the Lysenko affair. I, I, that's how I see it. Let me tell you two things. That's exactly right. Lysenko, it is to be remembered, had colleagues executed for not towing the political line. 
Not not mm. Spanish, not just fired, not just disfunded, but actually executed or sent off to Siberia. And here's what we well, know. I, well, doctor, I, I've seen some of these leftist fanatics say that anyone who is a denier should be uh, should be assassinated. Well, let, Senator Boxer and others and her committee, Senator Whitehouse and others, all Democrats, sent letters to 100 companies asking them, did you fund any, uh, any skeptical scientists? And what they accused these companies of doing is funding research, quote, designed to confuse the public oh my God. on carbon pollution. Boxer is one of the biggest... Boxer is one of the biggest phonies and liars in the history of the U.S. Senate. And all you need to do is Google Barbara Boxer and her family and see what land has been, uh, uh, let us say, land grab, uh, land alteration, environmental degradation under the guise of environmental protection. See what her and her family has have profited from land issues in Marin and Sonoma counties. And you'll know everything you need to know about that Harrod and Barbara Boxer. I'm sorry, we're almost out of time. Give us your website again, Doctor. It's WMBriggs.com. Two Gs. It, it's wonderful having an intelligent voice of reason on the Savage Nation. Let's look one day to the Skeptical Institute by Michael Savage. Thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. Now 48 minutes after the hour when I come back, all of the latest breaking news right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. All right, back on the Savage Nation. You know, I started the show today talking about corruption, corruption of the West, corruption of the language. We talked about the obvious political corruption that we see going on every day. Then we talked about the corruption of language with Prime Minister Tony Blair saying that Islam is not at war with them, that excuse me, the ISIS is not Islamic. Just nonsense wherever you turn. Everything is doublespeak. And I ended the two hours uh, with uh, false science, the false science of global warming, saying man is destroying the planet. And let me, let me give you a, a caveat. I have done more to protect the environment than almost anybody in the environmental movement. I'll stand by those words. I spent 20 years of my life working in the field of ethnobotany in the most remote islands at no benefit to myself whatsoever. I funded my own research. I studied some of the rarest plants on earth. I brought them back for research. Does it make me uh, Albert Schweitzer? No. I know real science and I know what it is. And let me tell you something, by studying plants, you can, er you can learn an awful lot about climate. So don't think that I don't understand anything about Earth and its changing uh, nature. But one thing we all do know is that your mother was right when she said the weather is unpredictable and the weather is always changing. Apparently, Barbara Boxer forgot that. And uh, something uh, Mr. Obama never learned at Columbia when he was reading Alinsky and Marx. But let's get back to the big issue, which is the corruption of science. Science has been corrupted in the United States of America, if not around the world. Science has been bought off lock, stock and barrel. So when you hear the word science or scientist, you can throw that out with the dishwater. It means nothing. What do you mean he's a scientist? What did he write? What do you mean scientist? What, he's a god now all of a sudden? If he's promoting false data and false science, then he's a propagandist like Lysenko. More, another big hour on the Pope, pseudoscience, and pseudo-religion on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The Shirelles, beautiful song. I guess it doesn't fit with the uh, new America. It's uh, too hetero. It's too heterocentric, I think. Although you could listen to it. And I guess it could be any centrist. It could be trans-centric, too. Love is love, isn't it? Chick-fil-A, named top fast food company. I never ate there. I never. 
I was in a mall once in Florida. I was tempted to go to Chick-fil-A in Boca Raton. It was jammed, blacks, whites. They didn't know about the boycott, speaking of chicken. Well, the chickens have come, have come home to roost in Greece. Chickens will soon come home to roost in the United States of America because we are Greece on steroids. The only reason we have not gone the way of Greece is because Barack Obama has his hands on the printing press. He makes up money. See, he's a man who's never held a job. As a young boy, I worked jobs since I was five years old. I sold used comic books to earn back the money to buy new comic books. I was uh, worked in my father's store. I worked in a factory, in an ice cream factory. I worked as a waiter, bus boy, lifeguard, you name it. I did it all. So I know what work is. Dishwasher, I did it all. I had to work for 50 cents an hour to be a dishwasher. I didn't care. I loved that money. I loved cleaning the dishes because I made enough money to do what I wanted with. Obama's never worked a day in his life. He never delivered a newspaper, never cut a lawn. He never sold lemonade, so he prints money. And that goes for everyone around them. None of them have ever worked for a living. So they're having the time of their life. Mrs. Obama flies around the world on Air Force One. She doesn't know the value of money. She also never worked a day in her life. Oh, they went to school. That's true. School is hard. It's very hard work. No question about that. But I worked and went to school. So our problem is that we have uh, inexperienced people running America, which means ruining the world. So they don't even understand what happened to Greece. They're trying to make the EU bail Greece out, saying you can't do that to them because if, e if, if, if Greece collapses, it'll bring down the house of cards called the European Union. It never was a union. It was imposed upon the people of Britain, for example, who never wanted to join the EU. They never wanted to take down the Union Jack, but it was taken down for them the way the American flag is being taken down today by the vermin of the left. So we're in a battle for our lives, and we have a cheerleader for the opposition running America. That's our problem. Welcome to Hour 3 of the Savage Nation. Glad to be with you. Glad you're with me. We have many topics. We concluded the last hour with an expert in climatology who said that the Pope is full of you-know-what. He's full of wafers, rotten wafers, on climate. And it was a very important discussion for one reason, because the essence of science is based upon skepticism. The essence of science is to never say all the science is in because all the science is not in on anything so far as I know. The first thing I learned in science is that there are no absolutes. I learned that in the seventh grade, which means you can't say this is absolutely true. Science is always open to new data. Do you understand that? So the minute you hear anyone like Barbara Boxer, the phony liar, say, all the science is in, and anyone who denies it is in the hands of the coal company, you know she's a filthy liar from the top to the bottom. Period. End of story and stand up to them, insult them, don't let them run you down with their lies. And so I, I concluded that hour talking about corruption. And I started the uh, hours before by talking about the corruption of language itself, where you have the King of England, I'm sorry, the Prime Minister of England, the would-be King of England, saying that ISIS is not Islamic. Not Islamic? The, the, the Islamic State is not Islamic? Well, it, it's not the Buddhist State. It's not BISIS. It's not the Jewish state. It's not Jisus. The acronym is not Kaisis. It's not the Christian state uh, that we're talking about. It's not the Hindu state. It's not Isis. They uh, have an acronym called Isis because they are the Islamic state. And they do represent, they do represent what they think is fundamentalist Islam. After all, they're not quoting the King James Bible, are they? They're not holding up the Old Testament and saying we're cutting off heads in the name of the Old Testament. They're not holding up the Old Testament saying, hey, look at that. You may think it's horrible to rape eight-year-old girls, but they're not holding up the, the Old Testament to say that's why they can kidnap and rape and sell into slavery eight-year-old girls. No, 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 they're holding up their holy book. So we're talking about the corruption of language. Then we go to the corruption of science. And the Pope is coming here with a corrupt message where they excommunicated anyone who has any evidence to the contrary. We're living in very dangerous, sick times, and it's all because, I swear to God, you say, well, it's Obama. I, I, you could say it's all him. He's, an he's the embodiment of everything false on the planet. He is the embodiment, the embodiment of falsehood itself, incidentally. He didn't get there by himself. I mean, he was put there. He was picked, handpicked, 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 and here we are. So if you care to join the conversation, the phone number is 855 the main theme, and every day on the Savage Nation, I try to create a new theme. Today's theme is corruption, doublespeak. 
And I want to continue that discussion, talking maybe in this hour about the corruption of science itself. WABC Joe, welcome to the Savage Nation from New York City. What's on your mind? Hello, Michael. Uh, first of all, the word corruption means the heart is breaking from the Latin quarter. Uh, the update. Uh, so it's a very good word that you're using. Uh, science uh, really emerged in the West through the, uh, uh, ph through the theology and philosophy of the Church when they condemned uh, animism in the 4th century. And animism is the, was the belief that the sun and the moon and the earth had souls. Once, you, once they removed that, that gave kind of uh, the green light to uh, find the laws of nature, nature being created by God, who is separate from nature. God created nature, and that nature has a logic to it and the laws to it, and therefore we could discover those laws. So, and, well, I like what you said so far, but I have to disagree with you on the uh, origin of the word corrupt. It's uh, from uh, ancient French, which means, uh, from the ancient French word of corrompt, corrompt fair, to break holy or corrupt. It doesn't mean break the heart. Joe, Joe it, mean, the heart. it means it means to it means to break, not break the heart. Yeah, well break quarto is the scent is quarter. Quarter is heart. Even in Italian, which I speak, it means heart. And uh, uh, you could you could argue it's to break anyway. the, the heart, but it comes from the Latin corruptus, which is the past plural of corrompere to break holy or corrupt. But let's not argue semantics right now. We both agree on the same thing, which is that the Pope is breaking our heart by pushing the big lie of global warming. Isn't that the fundamental statement that we're making here? For example, Michael, uh, Archimedes' principle, uh, I say this to many of my colleagues, uh, if the North Pole ice, which is floating on water, was to melt, would the sea levels rise? Well, they won't, because it's already floating on water, and that's Archimedes' principle. 2,500 years ago it was figured out. Uh, things like that. The sun oh, wait, you could, pr you could prove that to Al Gore by, well, I would say we could prove it to John Boehner by the next time he's seen slugging whiskey in a cloakroom uh, in the back of the uh, uh, Congress, let's say, a, a cloakroom. If he has, let's say, a martini or a mixed drink, a Manhattan, let's say, and there's an ice cube in it, right? You're saying if that ice cube melts, it won't overflow his glass, right? That's right. Because why? Because the ice cube is condensed water, which is already accounting for its displacement within its own sphere in that water, right? That's the displacement principle of Archimedes. Uh, the other thing, the sun, uh, you can fit one million Earths in the sun, 92 million miles away on average, and uh, it has a mass of 333,000 times the Earth. The sun is the great generator of the kinetics of the Earth's air, the atmosphere. You, we cannot control the sun. There is no way that man-made can control. It, it, it's kind of arrogant to believe that human beings can affect and control. No, but the sun. Obama, Obama can control the sun, can he? He can control, he can control the Earth. Therefore, he should be able to control the sun and the moon. That's right. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. If you, <laughs> if you take God out of the equation as the creator, and you think that the Earth is the God, you 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 worship the God like Gaia. You're talking about it. Gaia. That's right. He's some guy. That Gaia, isn't he? Are you, a, are you a scientist by training in addition to being of Italian heritage? We, we spoke before. I'm a chemistry professor. I've taught almost 40 years. And well, what, do you know? I, what do you know? You must be bought out by the coal industry as well. Well, you know, another thing up here in Connecticut, uh, coal is coming in from Indonesia. It's been brought in and barged in. Uh, there's a power plant in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Well, wait a minute. Uh, don't we have coal in, in Kentucky? Why would they bring it from Indonesia? Uh, that's the question I asked of one of the congressmen up here. Uh, and he, he absolutely told me, yeah, that's, that's true, we're doing that. That happened when Obama became president. Why Indonesia with this president? I don't know. It's interesting. Well, there must follow the money. There's no doubt kickbacks all along the uh, watchtower. Well, I'm sure you enjoyed my guest, Dr. Briggs, and I try to do it on a daily basis, a little bit of science every day. In fact, there's going to be much more of that on my show in the in the days and weeks to come because talk radio has to change it can't just be obama bashing because he's bad enough without us and just fetching about him isn't going to change him i'm sending you a free copy for july 4th of my great novel countdown to mecca joe thanks for listening to the program time for one quick call at this junction ron on wmal on line six what's your point my friend 
A pleasure, Dr. Savage. Uh, my point is that science, uh, lack of science, and uh, misunderstanding of science has corrupted just about every area of human endeavor in America. In medicine, for instance, there's an entity known as the shaken baby syndrome, and it doesn't exist. And you can prove it in about 30 seconds to anybody who thinks rationally. Um, you pick up a little baby, you support the head because they have no neck muscles. If you took a baby like that and shook it, physics dictates the injury is going to be in the neck. They never have neck injuries. Turns out the entire syndrome is based on a misinterpretation of one single experiment done for an entirely separate purpose by someone I knew. They're no, wait, wait, wait. You, I, I'm following you and I'm losing you. The shaken baby syndrome you're saying doesn't exist? You mean if you shake a baby, you won't break its neck? No, no. If you shake a baby, you'll kill it. A baby, yeah, a baby. Right. But you won't kill yeah. it from a head injury. You'll kill it from a broken neck. But the Correct. So, so what's, what's the conflict here? Head injuries. What does the shaken baby syndrome say that they're dying from? Head injury. Bleeding okay, and you're, head. and you're saying it's a, a spinal cord injury from breaking the child's neck, the infant's if neck. A baby, yes, you would break its neck and give it a spinal cord injury, but they never have injuries in their spinal cord. So the entire syndrome, as it, as it has been described, is scientifically incorrect. And all those people who were put in jail for having shaken a baby and the baby has a head injury, have been wrongfully accused and wrongfully convicted. That's corruption of science, and it's infiltrated medicine. Well, I can give you many examples of the corruption of medicine. About, I'll give you a simple one, the overuse of uh, drugs, behavior-controlling drugs for, for boys, for example, the false diagnosis of ADD, ADHD, the overdiagnosis of such illnesses in order to drug our children in order to suppress the males in particular in our society. You talk about corruption of the pharmaceutical medical establishment. You don't have to look any further than that, uh, Ron. Well, I agree, but you don't go to jail for taking those drugs. You do go to jail for allegedly shaking a baby. And All right, I hear you. I hear you. All right, listen, Ron, it's July 4th weekend coming up. Take a break, barbecue. I'm sending you a free book to read, Countdown to Mecca. Perfect book for July 4th. It is a, 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 a steaming, steaming book. So scientists have been fudging data for years just for money. Anyone who disagrees and tries to show the true data is uh, uh, called an infidel by them. They're no different. The, the, uh, those who believe in global warming and don't permit any evidence to the contrary are absolutely no different than ISIS. The only difference is they don't yet have the power to kill you. But I can guarantee you if these leftists were given the power, they would do just what was done in the ex-Soviet Union. They would kill you faster than you could say, Mickey Mantle. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. On the Savage Nation, a whack a job, a whack job liberal federal judge just freed a Florida imam, a former Marine accused of radicalizing homegrown terrorists. Hold on, listen to this. He is so dangerous. He's a former gang leader turned radical Muslim imam. He was considered so dangerous that he was kept in shackles and assigned his own guard while he was being held in a Florida prison for four years. But he was today freed by a federal judge who said he believes Marcus Dwayne Robertson is a very bad man, but that federal prosecutors were woefully inadequate in making their case for keeping him behind bars. You'll not believe the story. I posted it from Fox News on michaelsavage.com. He's a former U.S. Marine trained in special ops. He once headed up a New York gang dubbed Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. He then got into the, to the imam racket. He resurfaced as a radical imam in Florida. He radicalized young men and sent them overseas to terrorists to join terrorist groups. And while locked up in the federal wing of the Johnny Polk Correctional Facility in Seminole County on gun and tax fraud convictions, this prisoner was shackled and held in isolation with an armed guard assigned to him exclusively. Listen to this. Whenever this man was transported to court, a seven-car caravan of armed federal marshals escorted him. And yet despite this man's dangerous background, this judge said, no, you didn't do it persuasively enough. 
Judge Gregory Presnell freed Robertson with time served. Robertson personally participated in more than a dozen armed robberies, shot and killed several men, wrote the judge in a June 25th sentencing statement. But he said despite this, the prosecutors didn't do a good enough job to convince him that this man, Robertson, is a terrorist leader. So he let him out of jail. Can you believe this? Can you believe the country you're living in? That this man, a former robbery gang leader, imam in the imam business, a man who was once a bodyguard to Omar Abdel Rahman, nicknamed the Blind Sheik, who led the terrorist group that carried out the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. Could you believe that this man also donated more than $300,000 in stolen funds to mosques he attended, according to prosecutors, and he was released today from jail. He reinvented himself as an imam. Imam, isn't that wonderful? This man is now on the streets, very shortly be on the streets again. The man is now free to do as he wishes because of a radical, liberal judge. But his attorney, Daniel Broderstein, told Fox News his client is delighted the judge saw it his way. That's the country you live in. Have a nice break. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. It's the Savage Nation. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're talking about double speak. We're talking about the corruption of America, the corruption of the West, the death of the West, corruption of language. The example that I've been using today is the alleged conservative leader of England or Britain, Cameron, saying to the BBC that is ISIS is not Islamic. It's beyond belief to double speak. And you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? They're doing it because they are corrupt politicians who do not want to lose the Muslim vote. It's that simple. Just as Obama c continues to lie about the type of immigrants we're getting, saying they all come here to work, they all are family people, there are no criminals. We all know that's a bunch of garbage. One third of all prisoners are illegal aliens. You haven't heard that in a while, have you? One third, it hasn't changed, it probably went up. Rapists, murderers, you name it. One third of all prisoners are illegal aliens. So don't tell me they all come here to work. It's impossible to even believe they would be saying things like this. And why does Obama do it? Because the demographics have told him that the middle class is gone for him. The middle class knows what he is. They know he's a, a rank and file member of the Internationalist Brigade, wants to erase the borders of America, wants to replace Christianity as a religion, wants to subjugate the people of America who work for a living. And so he's written you off. And so his new demographics are prisoners, illegal aliens, you name it. Put them all together and they're a majority. He's a corrupt politician. Corruption of language, corruption of politicians, corruption of a nation, death of a nation. I want to play for you quickly Jonathan Sachs from England, a piece that I found on YouTube about the religious war we are involved in in clip 29. We are facing a phenomenon in the world that the West has not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th centuries. When they ended in one place, they began in another, and they lasted for more than a century. The same factors present then are present now. One, discontent with an existing power widely conceived to have been corrupt. Then the Catholic Church, today secular nationalist regimes. Did you hear that? It was a discontent with an existing power widely conceived to have been corrupt, then the Catholic Church, and today secular nationalist regimes. Well, today we have something worse than we had with the discontent of the Catholic Church then. We have a naked Marxist posing as a pope. I said it, I live by it, I've never seen anything like it. The corruption of the West is so advanced that the language itself has been corrupted by Orwellian politicians and news people. Obama and Cameron, in my opinion, represent corruption of language. A corruption of the language itself. Oh, we know what corruption is. That would be the Clinton Library in the minds of millions of people where we hear that Hillary asked $275,000, for example, for a speech. She didn't, uh, they didn't want to pay it at some obscure university. They hired instead the nobody, the non-entity, the daughter. The non-entity daughter. 
the girl who can't finish a sentence unless it's written for her, and she asked for $65,000 for a 10-minute speech, I swear to God. $65,000 she would speak for 10 minutes. Tell me, that's not corruption? There's never been a time like this in the history of the United States or of the West where the nation and the West is so perversely and systematically dedicated to the perversion of language in addition to special interests, earmarks, log rolling, vote trading, sweetheart deals, that the system itself is dead, dead in the water. Why do you think uh, that you, the people, have such a low opinion in every poll of Congress? An opinion ranging between 8 and 12% approval rating. Because you know they're corrupt. You know that they're not doing anything for us. You know that they're all like John Boehner, a double-talking drunk, in my opinion. Now, on one hand, you could say, well, it's always been like this. That's the easy, the easy way out. The cynic listening to this program would say, what's he complaining about? Politicians have always been corrupt. Well, that is true, but never at this level. Number two, never has national security been so degraded in a nation, in our nation in particular, that the leader of our nation would not even attend the meeting of world leaders last year after the Hebdo massacre, where Muslims, M-U-S-L-I-M-S, -S, Muslims attack cartoonists, killing many, and then attack Jews in a grocery store. World leaders met to condemn world terrorism. The only one not there was your phony, double-talking president, Barry Obama. He wouldn't even attend. Now we wake up, and the other day, while the White House was lit up in the rainbow colors to celebrate what? What were they celebrating? The ascension of 2% of the population, and they changed the colors of the White House to represent 2% of the population with rainbow lighting? Does it get any crazier than that? A 2% minority wins because of a corrupt Supreme Court, which in my opinion is obviously being bribed. There is no explanation for what the Supreme Court has done other than they are owned lock, stock, and barrel by the Obama administration. No doubt the NSA spying was aimed largely at them. That's my opinion. There's nothing else to explain it. And you know the biggest disgrace of all, well, we know that. Well, we talk about John Boehner. His name is going to become a verb for something, Boehner. You're going to say, oh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I have to figure that one out, all the different uh, forms of Boehner. Could you imagine, because he became a stooge of Obama, Obama let him ride in Air Force One. Did you see that picture on Drudge over the weekend? Astounding, where he morphed the two faces, Boehner and Obama, into one face. And the little boy Boehner was given a ride in Air Force One. Did you see that? Could you believe this story? This guy is such a, an embarrassment to the human race. The drunk, I called him a drunk, clink, it didn't matter. Stabbed America in the back, stabbed the country in the back, gutted the Statue of Liberty. Unbelievable to me. Went along with Obama on everything, and Obama rewarded him. The prince took him on Air Force One, and the little boy was given a certificate, which he held up in the air, showing that he rode on Air Force One. Could you believe this? That this is what we have as the so-called opposition? This is how far the country has fallen? Well, am I surprised? No. When I began the radio in 94, I said we have a one-party system. Oligarchs. Democrats or Republicans, one party, three card Monty with no P under the shells. That's all. It's all a game. Shuck and a jive. Don't tell me about 2016. It's over. There's no need for the election. It's all a game. No one can win. It's a rigged machine. It's like going to Las Vegas and think you're going to come home rich. Yeah, right. Go elect a Republican for what reason? Tell me the reason to elect a Republican for any reason whatsoever. All right, I get it. Oh, uh, let's see. Lower taxes, and you can you can burn coal and use. Uh, an injection on uh, yeah death row. Okay, I got it. Okay. And what else are they going to do for you? Social issues? Yeah, right. Social issues? Republicans? Are you joking? Well, fiscal matters or fiscal Republicans. Fiscal Republicans? Remember what George Bush did to you in the last three months of his regime? He jacked down the entire economy. He jackhammered the economy. He gave us Obama. You think they're not going to do it again? Do you think someone's going to lose money if this economy crashes? You're telling me people who made billions last time are not going to make billions again this time? You think George Soros is on the sidelines in Greece? Are you kidding me? That guy's trading money faster than the guys who traded money in the back of the temple when Jesus said, throw the money changes out of the temple. Banks shut until Thursday. Social unrest. Dow plunges 300. PM asks for patience. Government official says we're going to default tomorrow. 
world defenseless against next financial crisis. There's a picture of Trump. Uh, NBC now they, uh, gave him a, a knife in the back. Oh, I hope he gets even with the Zucker. I really do. NBC Universal cuts ties with Donald Trump. I hope there's a contract and he can hang them out to dry. NBC Universal, under pressure from an array of Hispanic groups, is severing its business ties to President candidate Donald Trump because he said the truth. It has nothing with dignity. The country is being overrun by illegal aliens, many of whom are criminals. We know that there's a drug corridor running right out of Mexico into America. There was a whole report on it last night on MSN, on, excuse me, on CNBC. It's no mystery. So why shouldn't Trump speak the truth when he's speaking the truth? So what happened is NBC said we're cutting all ties with you. The fascists at NBC. Trump's opinions do not represent those of NBC, blah, 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 blah. I believe that Trump should sue them if he has a contract. He should break them over his knee. I'm sorry. I am sorry for these fascists at the networks to not permit freedom of speech is exactly what they've been doing anyway all these years. When have you last heard your viewpoint represented on NBC? Huh? Now, I realize he may not become president because he's never been a community organizer, and he probably never read Alinsky. He may have had Alinsky as an, as, a, as an accountant when he was young, one of Alinsky's cousins, but I don't think he's ever read Alinsky, so he has no organizing experience in the community level. Stop the coming civil war, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Who wrote that? Raise your hand if you bought the book, Stop the Coming Civil War. Raise your other hand if you bought the book, Countdown to Mecca. Raise your hand if you know who wrote those books. Obama's engaged in the civil war from the day he began. Who told you that this guy was conducting a civil war against every institution you believed in? Don't stop talking about it. Don't be intimidated by him. This man is trying to burn the country down. Why? The insane left will not be satisfied until you're absolutely powerless. And where's the illegal immigrant in all of this? They all work hard and pay taxes. Really? What taxes? What taxes have they paid? Mexico is home to the world's largest drug cartel. We're the largest customer. Trump said so. He had the nerve to say so. So here we are. We're in a war right now. We're in a war right now, and we have a mob running America. They want absolute control over everyone's speech. I hope Trump fights back and wins. I hope he runs. I really hope he runs. Remember he was on my show a week before I left, and I asked him point blank. Remember the first question? I didn't mince words. I said, look, Donald, many people fear you're running as a stealth third-party candidate to undercut whatever Republican chances may be, but not that it matters anymore, uh, to, to elect Hillary. Remember he paused for about 40, 50 seconds, and you didn't think you were going to get an answer? Raise your hand if you remember that. Thank you. Thank you in the back of the room. I let him run out. I let him run out like the great whale he is, and I didn't say answer the question. I didn't do that. I'm not a gotcha guy. And the Donald came back and said, I guarantee you, Michael Savage, I'm not running on a third-party ticket. I'm running as a Republican. I'm a lifetime Republican. I'm not out to split the ticket. You heard it. He made news on this show, but no one reported it because I'm not a member of the Rush Cartel. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. This is not the war between Islam and the West, which I still want people to believe. It is a generational struggle between a minority of extremists who want hatred to flourish and the rest of us who want freedom to prosper. And together, we will prevail. What sadness is in my heart to have to listen to this corrupt politician lie about the realities of the day. 30, 40, 50 Britishers sitting on a beach under an umbrella harming nobody, executed by a radical Muslim in the name of Islam. Probably 100 or more injured. Holiday makers, people who, poor people, no one rich goes to Tunisia, poor working British people who saved up for a holiday, who went to that nation of Tunisia. And by the way, most Tunisians are not radicalized. I want to say that Tunisians themselves have suffered at the hands of the radical Muslims in ways you could never imagine. Of course, it's a war. Of course, it's a war. It's not the perversion of a great religion. It's the fundamentalist interpretation of this religion. What do you have to be a fool to understand that? 
It's not a perversion of the religion. It's in the Quran, for God's sakes. It says kill the infidel. You idiots, you. Many of you liberals went out and bought a Quran after 9-11. I actually know someone, a lawyer. Right after 9-11, he went out and bought a Quran. I said, what are you doing that for? He says, well, uh, I, I want to understand where they, who they are. I said, you want to understand? Well, they've been teaching you who they are for quite a while now. Going back to the Crusades, they've been teaching you who they are. I guess you didn't learn it in your, in your, in your public school. In my great novel, Countdown to Mecca, there's a plot where a group of U.S. generals plot to blow up Mecca during the Hajj, thinking they'll take out the most radical members of Islam. Well, my hero, Jack Hatfields, knows that that's a disastrous mistake and that if they did that, they would radicalize all of Islam. And so my book is the opposite of what the liberals have said it is, and that's why the New York Times banned it from the bestseller list, even though the book beat five books in count of numbers sold. They made believe it didn't exist. So the book is about Jack Hatfield stopping the attack. And uh, the generals, one of the greatest segments of the novel is where the generals meet and discuss why they want to blow up Mecca. It's one of the most interesting passages. It's a political thriller, and I really recommend you read it for July 4th if you haven't gotten it yet. Countdown to Mecca in bookstores now. And I want you to look at it. It's very important. It's a great book for July 4th. But getting back to the death of the West, Obama lights the White House up in the rainbow colors the same day that Muslims, M-U-S, L-I-M-S, go on a rampage throughout Europe to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the rise of ISIS, which Cameron says doesn't exist. And what they do? A uh, factory owner has his head cut off by a Muslim in Paris and his head's put on a fence. A mosque is blown up in Kuwait. Dozens are killed. Muslim killing Muslims because they're not, let us say, pure enough for one side or the other of this madness. And in Tunisia, an ordinary guy, a master's student in engineering, picks up a Kalashnikov, goes on a beach, and executes, we don't even know how many. Cameron knows it's higher than 30. It might be 50. He shot men, women, and children in cold blood, and he did not kill Muslims. He did not shoot any Muslims. He shot only non-Muslims. So don't tell me that we're not living through the perversion of language and the death of the West. We are very clearly living through the perversion of language and the death of the West. And you've got to ask yourself why. Why would Cameron, notably Cameron, why would he lie about the Islamic State like this when he knows they are the Islamic State in their mind? How could he say they're not the Islamic State? He's defining them for them? Well, would you say the British Empire still exists? Let's redefine the British Empire. Where is the British Empire? It exists on shelves in the back rooms of patriots in England who remember the British Empire. There's no British Empire. There's no Britain anymore. And if Obama is not stopped before the end of his madness is over, there will be no America anymore. He is merging the United States of America into a North American trade zone where Mexico and the United States will become one hodgepodge where we inherit the poorest, the least educated, and the most diseased of Mexico. In other words, those of Mexico that Mexico doesn't want will become part of America for us to take care of. Does that make sense? Does that make you uncomfortable?